In today's video, we'll be talking about the horrible microtransactions that are within Metal Gear Survive, the latest Metal Gear game from Konami. We have an update on Final Fantasy's DLC schedule, and that has changed quite a bit. And a trailer for the latest Assassin's Creed Origins DLC has also been released. We'll go over that in a little bit. First, let's talk about Metal Gear Survive, which has been one of the more controversial games of the year. If for somehow you don't know about it, I don't really blame you. It's not like this game is gaining a ton of traction, but it is the first Metal Gear game by Konami after the departure of Hideo Kojima. However, this isn't your typical Metal Gear game. As the title of the game would suggest, it's more of a game in an open world style setting similar to Metal Gear Solid 5. However, it has an emphasis on just surviving. The game is called Metal Gear Survive, so it makes sense, but it borrows a lot of the gameplay elements from your traditional Metal Gear games. There's already been a ton of skepticism surrounding this game, and that's not going to be helped at all by the game's use of microtransactions. According to US Gamer, if you want to create another character on top of your original character that you create within Metal Gear Survive, you will have to pay $10. That's how much it costs to acquire the 1,000 survival coins. Now, paying $10 will actually get you 1,150. 50 survival coins. So congrats, you got 150 coins left over, but you cannot just create another character. You will have to pay $10. Your other option is to delete your main character, and then you'll have one slot for a new character. However, that still really sucks. You shouldn't have to pay $10 to make another character in a game you already paid for. This is a $40 release. You should be able to make as many characters as you want, and if you want to introduce microtransactions, it shouldn't hamper the gameplay experience. Rather, it should be on things like cosmetics, but this is taking it a little bit too far and considering there has already been a lot of negativity surrounding Metal Gear Survive, I do not believe this is gonna help one bit. Metal Gear Survive was released on the PC, PS4, and Xbox One on February 20th and it just arrived yesterday in Europe. Moving on from that negative news, let's also talk about Final Fantasy XV, which is one of the games that might have took the longest time to develop. It was announced back in 2006's Final Fantasy Versus 13, released in 2016. Square Enix has done a decent job of keeping the game updated and releasing brand new content for it. However, now really the question is, is that 2016 experience we got just half the game? Because we saw a trilogy of three episodes, episode Ignis, episode Gladio, and episode Prompto already released, and honestly, that content should have already been in the game. Rather, it was locked away in the season pass, and now it has been confirmed that Final Fantasy XV will have four DLC episodes in 2018, and it'll last up until 2019. Originally, it was supposed to just have three episodes that would all be released in 2018, starting with episode Arden, but now that's been changed to four DLC episodes as confirmed by Dengeki Online. On one sense, I'm happy that we're getting more content out of Final Fantasy 15, but at the same time, as somebody that played through the game, I noticed how bare bones that story was, and these episodes really do a good job of fleshing out the story and characters. You just wish this would have been available right away, and when you played through the game back in November of 2016, no, rather, we first had to pay $30 for a season pass, and now there's another set of episodes being released. Who knows how expensive this will be? Probably another $30. And then we also know there's a Royal Edition upgrade, which is going to add more content. As much as I personally loved Final Fantasy 15, not from a story sense, but it's world design, even I can acknowledge that Square Enix is doing a little bit of milking here. And while many gamers are seeing this upcoming Royal Edition that's being released in March as the complete version of Final Fantasy 15, in reality, it is far from that. Chances are we're going to see the Royal Edition in March, and then probably next year, we're we're gonna get the Royal Complete Edition or something crazy like that, and that will truly be the definitive Complete Edition. Who knows? Maybe beyond this, they'll do even more DLC and try to expand the universe more. I'm all for expanding the universe, and Square Enix has done a great job of adding free content to you. You look at that Assassin's Creed event that they did, that was really cool, but considering how bare bones that story was with its initial release, this content would have been really nice as a part of the main game, and it probably should have been in the main game. Nonetheless, once again, four new DLC episodes. They'll be released in 2018 and it'll end on 2019. And finally, there is a brand new trailer for Assassin's Creed Origins' latest expansion in Curse of the Pharaohs. It looks really good, and it has Bayek find a mysterious artifact in Thebis where he immediately runs into much more than he bargained for. Instead of the shadowy but still human order of the ancients, he finds undead pharaohs materializing in the streets and slaughtering civilians. It's gonna add a whole new region, and the trailer does do it some justice, so make sure you check that out. We uploaded that to our channel. If you're a fan of Assassin's Creed Origins, it's gonna be a game that'll be updated all throughout 2018. As we mentioned before, it looks like Ubisoft is not gonna release a brand new Assassin's Creed title this year. Rather, they're gonna continue focusing on monetizing Assassin's Creed Origins, bringing you new content for that. And then in 20 
2019, we're probably going to see the next iteration of Assassin's Creed, which I think is a good business model for the franchise going forward. If you really want to monetize the franchise on a yearly basis, release a main game every two years, but in that in-between year, you could just release content for the last Assassin's Creed game. I think that's a good idea. For those that are big fans of Assassin's Creed, they can stay with that game in the following year. For those that are a bit more casual, you can play the main game, you can get a good experience out of it, but then you can wait two years for the next title. Let's just hope with the Assassin's Creed games, they don't start stripping away a lot of content, locking away a lot of content just so monetizing it for the following year would be easier. But who knows, at some point, Ubisoft is probably going to have to make a decision on whether or not to cross that line. So that is going to wrap up this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about Metal Gear Survive and its microtransactions? Do you think I'm blowing it out of proportion or do you agree with me? What do you think about Final Fantasy 15's new DLC? We're getting four new episodes, probably a brand new season pass to go with that. I'm excited for more FF15 content, but at the same time, I understand that Square Enix is really milking this game. And finally, what do you think about the Assassin's Creed Origins Curse of the Pharaohs expansion? It looks really good. Sound off with your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.